So this is the bag sort video for the row I, one through six blocks. And the first thing I'm gonna do is open my row I pack. And I have inside my I1 through I6 bag that I will be sorting. My I7 through I13 will be on another video. And then I have my cornerstones and lattices bag. And I have one, two, three, four and a half inch squares in this particular pack. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to the notes section and find out exactly what both squares they are for. So this is for the I5, I5, I6, and I10 blocks. So I'm gonna have those ready to go with those squares. So for the I10 block, since it's in the other bag that I'm not doing on this at this time, I will set that aside. And I've got I5 and 6 that I will set with my I1 through 6 bag. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to see which blocks are modified. So I will get my Spiral Bound Dear Jane book and I will turn to I5. So I5, I will turn to right here. And I will write EPP modified in a ballpoint pen because it doesn't smear right on the block. That's because when I go to lay out my, my pieces that are in my bag, I know that I need to refer to the booklet. And when I go to make the block after I've block prepped and everything, I know that I need to refer to the booklet for my layout. In certain situations, it's not, this, this is not terribly different in this situation. But in some situations, they've changed the piecing. So you need to make sure that you know which ones you need to refer back to the book. I'm gonna turn the page, and then I've got I7. So I'm gonna flip this over and mark my I7 block. EPP modified. My next one is showing as I9, and that is on the following page right here, EPP modified. And I'm going to write all of these for the entire booklet so I can make sure that I get them all. So I've got I10, and I10 seems to be significantly simplified. So that'll be nice, and that's why I need to know that I have one square piece here and this is one of the ones that uses a four and a half inch block that I need to then applique pieces on instead of having to figure out how to piece this. Thank you very much paper pieces for simplifying this particular block. So I will write EPP modified here and then my next block is I13 which is the last block in the row. So that's right here. EPP modified. All right, so then I will turn to my cornerstones and sashings, or cornerstones and lattices. This is going to have what you need to put around your blocks. So you have sashings that you need to put between the blocks vertically. And then you have sashing that you need to put on the bottom of the blocks horizontally because the H row is going to have the sashings and cornerstones that are going to end up being a part of the top of your I row. I have 13 blocks in my rows, which means I need sashings surrounding each one, which means I need 14 vertical sashings. So I will count out all my sashings. And that would be 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 for my vertical. And then all the other ones are the horizontal. There's 13 blocks, so there's 13 sashings. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And they usually give you one or two extras just in case. 
I will save these in a separate bag that I've been accumulating since I've started my, my quilt, just in case I lose them or I ripped them or whatever. And then your cornerstones are gonna be the same number as your vertical sashings. So I need 14 of those. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14. And I have two extras, which is fantastic because you just never know. So then what I do with these is I will take my pen and I will label these with a C, just a C, because if I get these mixed up with anything else, I want to make sure that I know exactly what they're for. And then I have a bag that I will put my sashing and cornerstone bits in. I have, I have a sashing and cornerstones making of video available on my YouTube channel and it talks about doing these in big chunks and so I have a bag in my packet that I keep as a running go as a running total and so this has got little bits these are not long enough for sashings but these are big enough for cornerstones and I will put them in here and as I get there I will, as I get some time, I'll glue them and then other times I'll sit there and I'll baste them and it just depends, but I will mark which rows I've done. And so now that I'm gonna put my I row in here, I am going to write, obviously, the letter I. And so that way I know how many I've gone through. On my sashings, I'm gonna actually write the word sash because that's what I've chosen to do. I'm gonna put these in my bag and I'm not gonna sit here and make you watch me write the word sash, but I will do that at another time. And for now, I will just put them in my bag. And I also have a bag of pieces that I've pre-cut to put my sashings onto, because it's a lot easier to do these in giant chunks. So I'm gonna also put my eye on here so that I know that I'm ready to do my eye. I will count out 27 pieces, which is 14 plus 13. And I will put my 27 pieces for my sashings into my other bag with my actual paper pieces. So then I will set that aside. Before I get started with my bag sort, I wanted to take a moment and explain, since this, this is my first one through six block bag sort of any row, I wanted to explain how I do my fabric. It is now 2017, almost 2018, but back in 2010, I signed up for a block of the month with Stitch in Heaven Quilt Shop. They still have multiple blocks of the month for the Dear Jane. They have different colorways. They start them on different months. That is the website that I went to in order to get my fabric because EPP for Dear Jane is only a year old. So back seven years ago, I had to make this from the normal way. But when you buy the Dear Jane book, all you have is pictures of the actual blocks and diagrams of the lines. There's no instructions. And so it was extremely intimidating to me. And what I really liked about the Stitch in Heaven packs was that it broke it down. This is month 14 where I happen to be. There is eight blocks and two triangles per month. So I happen to be on the beginning of a row, which is weird, and then a beginning of a triangle row, which is weird. So this pack starts like a whole new era, I guess would be the best way to say it. The What I liked about these is that the fabric quantities are enough to do a block. They're quite generous, but they're not fat quarter sized. So it saves you a ton of money. The other thing I loved about this, especially at the time, is that it came with suggested instructions for all 10 blocks in the months. And so for the block of the month price, which I'm not sure what that is after seven years, um, for the block of the month price, not only did you get a smaller quantity of fabric to help you be more economical, but you also got instructions for 10 blocks within one month. 
So these are the focus fabrics and they list exactly which ones they are. This is the, the one that they used to emulate the original colorway. So I haven't selected any of my fabrics. I have used these month packs. And then the other thing that's in here, so you've got all these focus fabrics and then you have five different background fabrics. You use one piece per two blocks. And so I will go through and I like to pick which backgrounds I use with which blocks based on the size of the pieces of the background of the block and the color of the fabric and all that kind of fun thing. So you do have some freedom from that standpoint. But it's been very freeing to not have to find prints and all that. So, you know, you've got, to, I this is like little leaves or something. I think they might be actually berries, but they kind of look like little angels to me and hearts and you get the idea. So that is my little secret for those people who have wondered where I've been picking my fabric. The trick is I didn't. So I will take my focus fabrics now that they're already assigned anyway, and I will, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six will be in my, my one through six. I block one, two, three, four, five, six will be in my so I will take the first six fabrics to here and those are going to be the fabrics that are going to be for these blocks and then I will pick which ones I will use for this so what I do is I disregard these for now and I'll set those aside and I will sort my blocks label my blocks and put my focus fabric in my baggie and then I'll go back and figure out which ones I want with which backgrounds so let's get into this. So I'm trying to get these out. You gotta be make sure that you're not gonna pull them out and force them out. This one was getting caught. So I'm gonna then set my bag aside. Sometimes I'll sort a few blocks out and then I'll put them back. And what I'll do is I'll cross this off and label whatever blocks are left in my bag in case you don't get to sorting them all at one time. So the first thing I do is dump these out. And then I will take my Dear Jane book, especially when that's where I have to find the sizing of my pieces. And I will take my trusty handy dandy stiletto with my flat sides so that it doesn't roll away. And I will start picking out pieces. So this has got some giant squares in it, which happens to look like they match up here. And just to confirm, I will make sure that these are both the exact same size because sometimes they vary slightly. So these seem to be the same size. So I will assign these here. And then I have 9 plus 9, 18 different squares of all the same size. So it's just a matter of finding all those squares in this pack. And these are also squares. So what I'll do is I will pull all the squares out that I can find. And in this case, that's going to go here. So you can do multiple blocks at one time. And if you're really brave, you can open up your spiral bound book flat and do four blocks. I'm not that brave, but the reason I use my stiletto is because in things like this, I want to make sure that I get these laid out. And so instead of jerking around, I will sometimes push them into place with my stiletto so that I don't bump everything and make it go flying because I've done that before. Now triangles, I'm going to, I'm going to check from point to point because triangles can be very very close from triangle to triangle I'm going to call that good and I'm going to put that here so I've got all these pieces and what I do as I'm doing the sorting of pieces that are obviously not for this block is I'll kind of put them in little piles by what kind of pieces they're all so I'll do if there's a weird shape I'll put weird shapes together like in this case, that's a weird shape, so I'm going to put those together. I will find more squares, find more triangles, verify my triangles, and all that fun stuff, and just work on this. All right, so I found my I1 and I2 pieces all on here and I've laid them out. So I'm going to start with, in this case I'm going to start labeling I2 because I'm right handed and so when I lay my hand down, if I do I1 first, I'm going to bump my I2 block. So I'm going to start labeling I2. 
and I will write I2 on every one of these pieces. And I have to hold them down so I can write on them, otherwise they move and I can't write on them, obviously. So I will do all of these blocks. All right, so I've written on all my I2 blocks with my extremely fine point Sharpie. I guess it's called ultra, ultra fine point Sharpie. And now I'm gonna look at my picture and figure out which ones are focus fabric and which ones are background. So in this case, the dark fabric is the focus fabric and I'm gonna take a Sharpie and put a dot on the ones that have focus fabric. And that's all of these outside ones and then one, two, three, four. So the ones with the dots have focus fabric on them. Then the next thing I'm going to do, because I have my fabrics already selected, while I have this laid out, I'm going to take my fabrics and I'm going to see if it's directional. So this is my I2 fabric. And if I hold it this way, it looks one way. If I hold it this way, and I call this 360 directional, which means it looks different from every single 90 degree angle. So it has to be the same way exactly orientated on the block if I want it to be lined up on my block. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put arrows on my focus fabric blocks to make sure that I have them all in the right direction. And this block is on point. And I can tell based on my preferences and the way that I know this that I want these to be going up. So I will put an arrow of the same direction on every single one of my red dotted blocks so that when I pull these out of my baggie I know that every one of these is going to be orientated right because if I look at this block and then I look at this one when I pull them out of my baggie, they look exactly the same. But I know that the side that it's written on is the side that is the back, and that these are maybe the same shape, but for a directional fabric, oh, this one's gotta go this way, and this one's gotta go this way, so that I know which way the fabric's going to be pointing. So at this point, this is all done being labeled, and I will take a baggie, and I will swoosh it all into the baggie. The other thing I will do with swooshing it into the baggie is I will take, this is a post-it a post -it note sized piece of paper, but it's not a post-it note because if you use a sticky piece of paper, you're gonna end up having pieces stuck to it. So I'll just put I2 and I will stick that in my baggie and then throw all my pieces in there. So now I have all of my I2 pieces in my baggie and I'm going to then take my focus fabric piece and I'm going to fold it, lightly fold it up and stick it in my baggie with it so I have everything together so that when I go to block prep, it's all ready to go. Now I have focus fabric pieces and my giant label that one is now done. So then I will go to label my I1 block and when I la label my ones, especially in an I row, I make sure that I write the letter I and then I will do I guess what they call a European one. So I will do I capital I and one just because that way I know the correct orientation if there's an issue. So I'm going to go through and do all of these. So now I've got all of my I1 blocks labeled, and as you can see, I've bumped it, but they're all in the general, the same general layout. Uh, if I bumped it enough, I'd have to actually physically go back, and that's what I'll sit there and I'll do with my stilettos. I'll line it back up and make sure they don't overlap each other and that kind of a thing. So anyway, so they're still in the basic general orientation, and I'm going to look here to see what my focus fabric pieces are, and you've got the big squares or focus fabric. And then these 
four, and then these four. All right, and then I'm gonna check for directional and my fabric for my I1 block is this, which is what I classify as 180 directional because if it's this way or it's this way, it looks exactly the same, but it does not look the same if it's this way, but it looks the same if it's this way. So there's this way and this way are the two different ways. So what I can do in this case is I can always do my one-sided arrow, but in this case, I usually do two-sided arrow, so I know that it doesn't really matter if it's up or down. So I will do that on all my focus fabric pieces. All of the backgrounds that I have available to me are not directional, so I don't need to worry about my background pieces. But if you have a directional fabric on your background pieces, you definitely want to label those as well. So I'll go through these, and then I will put these in my I1 baggie with my I1 focus fabric. So I've got this bagged up and a word of caution real quick is I will make sure that the fold of my fabric, my focus fabric is on the bottom and that these openings are at the top. I want to minimize pieces getting stuck inside the fabric. So I kind of will set these, I'll put the baggie, I'll put the pieces in the baggie first and then I'll put the fabric in but I'll push the pieces to the side and like you know put my fabric on one side or the other of the pieces themselves because when I take my fabric out to prep my block I want to make sure that I'm not going to dump them everywhere. So now we're on to the I3 and I4 and while I was sorting my squares for the other two blocks I found nine squares for this block and so I'm going to lay those out. I Actually I work from the upper left down to the lower right because I'm right-handed and I am going to start that way. I'm going to put this piece here, and then I'll put this here, and then I'll put my other big long piece next to it, and then the next square. And then I will fill these in with my stiletto because that's when it gets kind of shaky is when it gets in the middle here. So I'm going to lay these out since I have most of these pieces already sorted. I have these little tiny rectangle pieces. I don't think I've found every one of them, but it won't take me much longer to figure out the rest of these. There's not a lot of the, there's not a lot of duplication of shapes in this particular bag. Sometimes there is, and luckily this one does not seem to have a lot of that, although I haven't gotten to some of the smaller triangles, so we'll get, I guess we'll get to see whether or not that's the case. So I'll get this one finished and then label it. So I've got my I3 block laid out and I'm going to label them for this piece, this big long piece. I try to do it in the middle. I'm going to cover it when I baste it with my fabric anyway, but I do try to then put it where it's useful. Alright, so I've got my I3 block laid out and I'm going to just mark my focus fabric pieces, which in this case are all the squares. So here's my little red dot which is easy peasy. And I'm going to check for direction on my focus fabric, which in this case has little hearts on it, but they're not directional. I'm gonna make it directional because I'm gonna fussy cut them and put them somewhere. I got two different kinds of hearts, so this should be a little interesting, but I don't have to mark my up and down. So then I will just bag my I3 block with my focus fabric and move on to my I4 block. Now we're going to move on to the I4 block. I've got some of these pieces that, all right, so these pieces are not exactly the same arc and I don't seem to have any other kind of these shapes, but these have the same distance from here to here. So right this second, I'm going to assume that these are the correct pieces for the middle. And I can verify that by finding my clam points, which is this center section. And I have two of those for this particular pack. I have this one, which is obviously way too big. And that means that this one is the one that's left. So I'm gonna slot this in here and it fits real nice into this corner. And this is the part where 
the stiletto lineup makes a big difference. So I'm just gonna picky, put these here, and then come in here with this one. <laughs> this is kind of touchy, but that's okay. All right, and then and then I gotta go get number four, which is right here to my left. Number four slots in here like so. So this is an example of how the math that's needed for the paper pieces is similar, but not always exact to the book. So this square fits exactly into the book square, but these pieces aren't exact to their drawing, but that's okay because it's gonna look the same. So then we've got all these different triangles. This triangle is the same size as these two. So the, you've got two, three, four triangles in each corner of the same size, and then you've got these four bigger triangles. So I'm gonna take this, line these up to check them. And I am gonna check every single one. I've had some really bad luck with some of these triangles and I'm gonna check these as I go too. So, some of these bags have triangles that are separated by, I think one of them I had a 64th of an inch or maybe a 32nd of an inch separation between the two. And it doesn't sound like much, but if you have eight triangles that have a 32nd of an inch off, that's a whole quarter inch. So it does matter. I didn't check that triangle. Yeah, okay. It does matter when you're looking at space over an entire block. So while sometimes the blocks aren't, like sometimes the pieces aren't exact to the book, you have to start with the assumption that they are based on what you have. You have to look at the, the whole bag if there's one bag, excuse me, if there's one block that has very similar pieces to another block, then you just have to be very, very careful. And we have run into this in a couple of situations. There was a Facebook discussion of a row that I haven't even made yet, which happens to be the L1 through L6 bag. And there's a block that lines up with the center of one block, but it's not the center of that block it turns out that the center of the block is actually another square. And I think it's like L3 to L6 or something like that. So I'm gonna cover that when I get to that point. But I like to solve problems. So I went ahead and sorted that to see, this was before I was making videos, sorted that to see exactly how that worked out. So I'm gonna finish laying these triangles out and seeing what I got going on. All right, so I've got my I4 block sorted and I'm gonna label each of my pieces with I4. All right, so next is to label my focus fabric, which the clam point center is my focus fabric and then my larger triangles, three and four, and then the triangles that point that way. I don't know if there's a special name for them, but those. So then I verify, I got the middle and then these four triangles and these four triangles, two, three, four. And then of course I will check for directional and I don't have a directional fabric. I don't think I have a directional fabric for this. I guess it just depends on what part I put where. So I will probably fussy cut this, but I'm not gonna worry about directional. Okay, so now on to I5, and I come to my I5 EPP modified. So I'm gonna go to refer to my booklet. And I'm gonna to try to put this as flat as I can. And I'm gonna get my little art pieces, and my little footballs, and my clam point center. And this also is a four and a half inch square piece. So I'm gonna set this aside right next to my stuff and then I'm gonna put this here and then put my footballs. These aren't the right pieces. 
These are for the other pieces. Oh, <laughs> and this is why we do bag sort video. So <laughs> these go here and then you have a four and a half inch square background and then you applique all this stuff on. See, this is how we all learn. So I have my four and a half inch square and my I5 focus fabric blocks. So I have this here and these are for I6. All right, so I'm gonna mark these I5 and then I'm gonna put red dots on all of these pieces since they are all my focus fabric. And these are going to be really interesting to line up. So I can't wait for the I-5 assembly video. Sarcasm is not my strongest point, but you know. So I got the little dots and I don't need a dot on my background and I'm going to put all this in my baggie with my focus fabric. Directional. Um, my directional, I've had issues with this. Because if you line it up like this, you've got a row and then an offset row. But then this is a row and an offset row. But if it ends up on point, it's all lined up. I think I am going to put an arrow on these. Because of the fact that it's circular. So I'm actually going to put an arrow on this. I, you wouldn't think that it's directional, but it does look different when it's lined up this way versus this way. So that's what I'm going to do with my ballpoint pen. So the last block in this bag is I6. And I6 has a 4.5 inch block from the beginning. So I'm going to have that and set that aside. And then I have eight pieces left, now that I didn't assign them to the last block. So I've got these guys and these little angular heart looking pieces. So we'll put those all together. And this is another situation where they don't quite line up exactly, but you want to line them up on the lines and then the angles will fall where they may. Now they're all the same to each other, so when you're done with your block, even though the drawing is different than the pieces, you're not going to notice a difference with the finished block. So I'm going to put all these here, and then these are all going to be labeled I6, and each one of these pieces on this drawing are going to be red dots, because they're all focus fabrics, and this one is not going to be a red dot. All right, so I've got my I6 pieces labeled and marked for my focus fabric. And as I go to look to see if my fabric is directional, I notice that I have a stripe. And if I look really closely at the peak picture here, there is a stripe. And what they've done in here, or what has Jane has done in her quilt, is she has made the stripes line up horizontally. And you can do, you know, it's quilting, so you can do anything you want. You can line them up vertically, you can make them radiate, whatever. I am going to make them radiate because I like the way that looks. So my striped fabric is right here. And so I'm going to put this one like this, this one like this. And in order to do that, again with the ballpoint pen, I'm going to put an arrow pointing out. And just in case... I'm confused when it comes to how I remember when I get to my I6 blocks, which may be a while, depending on how quickly I have availability to work on this. I'm going to actually write on my book the direction of the arrows in the same place that I that I wrote them on the pieces, so that way I know that I did them the specific way. So I'm going to have arrows here, here, and here. And since my blocks or my pieces are already labeled, it doesn't matter if I scoot them around. So I'm going to stick them all in my bag with my focus fabric and then I will be done 
with my I1 through I6 bag sort.